Well, this was a uh, pleasant surprise in a lot of ways. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, see, my beard's grown back. I need to take a... Hi, everyone. Um, I pressed record button this time. Good. I didn't do that on... Was it my In the Heights review? Yeah, it was my In the Heights, in the Heights review. I five minutes gushing about the movie for <laughs> my camera was off. Hi, everybody. Um, it's me, again, Grand Movie and TV Guy. Hello. Um, and we're going to be talking about a movie that... Um, Surprisingly, there's a lot more to talk about than I thought. Um, and that movie is Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. Uh, this movie is directed and co-written by um, Will... Was it Will Gluck? Perhaps Will Gluck? I know the guy's previous work. I just... For right now, I can't think of who the guy... I think it's Will Gluck. I looked for his name in the credits, but I immediately forgot. What? Sorry. Again, it's the bloopers you all wanted to see. Will Gluck. Okay. So, Will Gluck... Has had an interesting career trajectory. Um, he started with, I believe his first movie was, I think, kind of an underrated sort of teen um, raunch romp uh, cheerleading movie called Fired Up. He moved it on to the actually kind of excellent Emma Stone teen comedy kind of modern classic Easy A or deserved cult classic. Um, and he also did the very funny and I think also kind of underrated, I guess, um, Mila Kunis comedy uh, Friends with Benefits, which are all very R-rated. And then he moved on to... Um, the Jamie Foxx remake of Annie, which also I didn't hate as much as the rest of the world. And then his most recent movie was 2018's Peter Rabbit, which divided critics, I guess. It, it has a fresh tomato, but, um, purists of the book, they're of course based on the book by Beatrix, the Be book series by Beatrix Potter. We'll get there. There's kind of a funny reason for that. Um, about the rascally adventures of this rascally rabbit who, uh, rascally rabbit who, um, bothers uh sweet old Mr. McGregor, in this case sweet young Mr. McGregor, um, trying to take his tomatoes and um with his animal friends. Well this um of course that movie took it in another direction and turned it into a pseudo meta narrative where their kind of surrogate mother figure is a woman named B who played by Rose Byrne, the always terrific Rose Byrne, who's basically Beatrix Potter. I mean that's who she is. Um she's a painter and an author who's bonded with the sweet little critters and also in the end of the first one falls in love with um young Mr. McGregor and so we pick up um with part two The Runaway which is once again directed by Will Gluck who did the first film and all those other films I described and we open on a wedding um Mr. McGregor and uh B are married and um much to Peter's horror finds out that means since they're kind of the adopted furry children of this sweet lady He's technically kind of their dad now, um, stepdad, which he does not like, even though he and Mr. McGregor are on, on begrudging good terms after the events of the first movie, he still doesn't quite trust the rascal, nor should he, because Peter is a rascal, and basically, um, so the plot kind of thickens, um, there's kind of a two-pronged plot where B, again, Beatrix Potter, um, is met by this, um, slick and charismatic, um, executive like like a publisher named Nigel Basil Jones they even make a joke about how how pretentious how many names you need I liked this movie all right I'm just gonna I'm gonna cover out I really like this um and then uh they want to kind of they liked the book that she published at the very end of the first one and they're like okay we're gonna publish we want to make this a franchise with like you know backpacks and um multiple sequels and like you know hip happen in movies and uh b is not sure integrity wise about that meanwhile peter has fallen in with a slick rabbit named barnabas played by lenny james voiced by lenny james rather and his crew among who includes two um cats played by of all people what a weird combo um da australian character actor damon harriman that's right uh charles manson from once upon a time in hollywood and um Haley adwell agent carter who are these kind of, you know, wisecracking criminal cats? Wow. Um, and then you also got, of course, people like um, his sisters, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. Cottontail of this time was, in the first one, was Daisy Ridley from Star Wars. She's not this time. I forget who it is. I think it's just like a voice. I think Amy something. Um, but then the other two are played by um, Margot Robbie and Elizabeth Debicki. Fine actors. And Margot Robbie is also the narrator. And they have a nice little sly in joke about this, among many sly in jokes. And soon, um, they pull off a plot, the sweet little animals, to rob, uh, a millennial infested farmer's market. 
what could go wrong and uh, what kind of uh, jokes we can make about millennials and uh, corporate selling out along the way. Look, I'm going to come around with it. I didn't just, I liked Peter Rabbit the first one. I actually liked it more than other people. I actually thought it was kind of charming and funny and it had its genuine, especially once you kind of let yourself go in with low expectations and kind of know this is not going to be a gentle, quiet little, little faithful adaptation of Miss Potter's books. Um, but at the same time, anyone, anyone who goes into that is also going to go in thinking Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is like actually Pride and Like, come on guys. You saw the trailer. You knew what this was. Um... So I like Peter Rabbit. I kind of loved Peter Rabbit too. I'm not going to lie. This one was really, not only funny, I never thought I'd say this, even about a movie I, a sequel to a movie I liked, but uh, about Peter Rabbit too. It's kind of a surprisingly sly satire of the way corporate entities, much like the one that made this movie, in this case Sony, takes beloved gentle characters and turns them into and basically chipmunkizes them into these like corporate media franchises and cinematic universes and then also kind of has that satire and kind of gets away with falling into the same trap and doing it slyly with the b with the literal b plot huh, b and mr mcgregor's plot um where there, there's even like there's a scene where they're doing like a mock-up talking about Peter Rabbit in space. There's like a mock-up of a poster where the the font looks clearly like Alvin and the Chipmunks, and they're all kind of like wearing jeans and like hip happening clothes and like given like the you know the DreamWorks eyes they call it the raised eyebrow. Funny. And then there's also these like little um, wink at the camera lines that are well executed. Um, like for instance, there's a scene where they have to hide out in like a a petting zoo at this farmer's market, and they go. Where should we hide, Peter? And he goes, over there with those weird animals who don't talk for some reason. Uh, there's, like, another part where uh, the one sister, Cottontail, who's already kind of hyper, gets hooked on jelly beans. And they treat it like it's, like, a narcotic. There's, like, a scene where she's talking to, um, people and goes, ooh, they have jelly beans there. So they, like, uh, the, the Barnabas is like, we don't, we're not on that crap. <laughs> like, move, silly, you know, goofy rabbit. Focus. You know, we're not on that. We don't, we're, we're, we're you know... We don't dabble in that crap, basically. Um, there's another couple lines from Rose Burns B that are quite funny where she's talking about, um, first off about how, do you have an idea for sequel? It's like, well, I don't know. I kind of had an idea for about a 23 book series with commemorative plates or something like that where it's like, based on every single character, there's an interconnected narrative, you know, and it's like, <clears throat> funny. There's another part where they literally wink to the camera, but it actually kind of earned it for me where she goes, um... I just don't want the, like, what, like, what do you feel, like, I'm, there's, I'm nervous about this, and he goes, what, what are you nervous about? I was like, I'm just nervous this is gonna become some kind of snarky hip fest made by some hack, probably an American, and then Benjamin Bunny looks at the camera and goes, like, basically, like, that scene in Jay and Silent Bob, Strike Back, where Ben Affleck as Holden McNeil's like, Jay and Silent Bob movie, who would go see that? And they all kind of turn and wink at the camera, that kind of moment, I was like, that's great. Uh, there's also, like, um... A funny little bit about at this in this other plot the main plot but i guess or whichever one you know they're both kind of the main plot but like the farmer's market they're like um how are, they're gonna hear us and he goes no they're not they're gonna be too busy listening to irritated irritatingly mundane folk music and the, with dudes and like a dude with like a goatee like a, like a like a like a what do you call it like a soul patch doing tar and they come back to the really funny um, they bring back some gags I love from the first one. I really expand on them. The rooster bit, which in the first one killed for me every time. Both these movies and that character followed the rule of threes, which is that something three times is funny, something more is not. So they do it just the right amount of times. Where he, it's not only... It's gone from him simply having an arc about getting a family while waking to the sun. He's also talking about how once he, re he loses his voice at one point, and he's just like... This makes me question my entire existence. My entire sense of being. <laughs> the sun is coming up regardless of me cacawing. Look, uh, I, I kind of love Peter Rabbit too. I can't quite pull the full five-star trigger on it. It's not quite like the Mitchells versus the Machines. It's not quite on that level. And it's not quite even on the level of just insanely warped, kind of dark slapstick of something really of that's funny like uh, Florian Ulysses is, a surprisingly kind of good kids movie that I gave four and a half to, I believe. Which... Don't be surprised that's on the best of us. I really did. I've seen it twice now. I really did like Florida Ulysses. Um, but especially when right in theaters right now, the other the other big choice 
in most theaters right now is forgettable extended TV pilot direct like Spirit Untamed or whatever the hell that was called. Peter Rabbit's pretty great family entertainment. And even if you're going in with no kids, you're like, yeah, it's fine. Um, this is the most telling thing I'll say. Mark Kermode, uh, English film critic Mark Kermode, who despised the first Peter Rabbit, put it on his worst list, even said that it should be called Annoying Rabbit. And he even got a stern talking to from James Corden's father, which, by the way, they even have a joke about that. I don't get the hate toward James Corden that other people... I just don't. I thought he was good in The Prom and Into the Woods. And even Peter Rabbit, I don't, I don't, I don't see the hate. The carpool karaoke thing with Chris Martin was awesome. I thought that was hilarious. But anyway, my point is, I um, hated the movie. And then they said, um, he and his and Simon Mayo, he's like, let's talk about Peter Rabbit too. And he goes, uh oh, go easy on him. Mark and he goes, weirdly enough, he goes, I will. He goes, really? And he goes, I kind of liked it. <laughs> he said, like, I hated the first one. You hated the first one. I know. So, color these friends. I kind of dug the second one. True. It is better than the first one. Um, and I'm going to give, can't go all the way, but I'm going to give Peter Rabbit 2 the runaway. Uh, four stars out of five. I really like that. I would recommend this totally for the family. I, And not just even in comparison to that Spirit movie, which was bad, but it's like, take the kids out of the movie. It's fun, and, and there's stuff for adults, and there's stuff for the kids, and it's a lot of fun. So, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, gets four stars. I really like this flick. Um, let's close the book on it. Um, trailer Trash. Let's do some Trailer Trash. Um, uh... We got actually some new ones here. Leave it to kids movies to give us some new variety of trailers and some, you know, some standards. Um, oh, this one. This one, plot-wise, didn't look anything special, but again, it looked like, kind of had like a little bit of a warped sense of humor for a kid's film. It's called, um, good title to it, Ron's Gone, Ron's Gone Wrong. Ron as in like Ronald. Ron's Gone Wrong. This looked kind of funny. It's uh, this little boy and he, um... Sort of like a, like one of those like robots that's kind of sleek and slender. And it's supposed to work. He gets a glitchy one and adventures ensue. And he names it Ron. Looks kind of funny. Um, it's like a... Like a this, is this the last one that Blue Sky Studios did before Disney closed it? Bastards. Um, damn you, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it's okay. It's a South Park episode. You'll know what I'm talking about. Hurt the Jonas Brothers. All right, Ron's gone wrong. He looked cute and had like warped humor where like he's kind of breaking things and kind of causing damage. It's like, dang. Um, next one, Jungle Cruise. This is a slightly different one from the one we saw in front of In the Heights. Again, looks like fun. Looks like my kind of flick. Um, good like summer bouncy family adventure movie from the good old days. Looks fun. Paw Patrol the movie again. I'm gonna see this movie. I don't. Care. I like this cartoon. I don't know why. Every, every adult has their kind of more, you know, guilty pleasure animated thing that's not really aimed at them. Paw Patrol's mine. And to a lesser extent, Peppa Pig. I just, I kind of, it's gentle and quiet and simple and moderately amusing. And it's, I just like it. Listen, if people in my age range can like My Little Pony, I can like Paw Patrol. At least it's, <laughs> come on guys. Yeah. All right, Paw Patrol the movie. Next one. Now, this I'm genuinely excited for. In fact, me and, similar to Paw Patrol, which I'm going to drag him to, me and a friend of mine are probably going to go see this and maybe even collab on a review of it. And that's, in a, in just a few weeks, uh, even. Uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy. Uh, Space Jam 2. I am so excited for this. I Being a kid born in the 90s and raised in the aughts, I love Space Jam. Space Jam, I own the movie on Blu-ray. In fact, if I had it here, I'd show you. I have it on Steelbook. Look, on Blu-ray. Look. This movie, it, it's no, it's no masterpiece, but it's so nostalgic. It's like Good Burger. It's like you, you, if you grow up with it, you love it, regardless of the fact that it hasn't aged that great. I'm really excited for this. And yes, I know it's member berries of the movie. I don't care. It's worth it. Uh, the Boss Baby Family Business, again, weirdly kind of liked the first Boss Baby. I actually thought it was kind of funny. Again, because it was basically Glenn Gary Glenn Ross with babies in it. Um, looks fun. Twelve Mighty Orphans, nothing to say. We talked about it a lot. Three little, uh, Twelve Mighty Orphans are horsing around. That's what I call it. The last one, okay, because I gotta go. Hotel Transylvania, Transformania. This is the fourth in the series. Gandhi's not directing it, but he is writing it. I love the Hotel Transylvania movies. Perfect cartoon fun. Looking forward to it. So, Hitman's Bodyguard, it's Weiss Bodyguard is tomorrow. Young Victor is, or not Young Victor. Love, Victor, is Sunday. And then we'll see what else is to come later. So, um, that'll be next time. Until next time. I'm going to the movie TV guy. I gotta hurry. I love you all. Appreciate you all. I love you all, Class Miss. I love you 2,000. Be kind to one another. Um, I see it all. I'm happy to share it with you. I'm doing out of order. I'm sorry. 
Um, go see Peter Rabbit. It's good. Uh, thank you. I'll take care. Bye.